Hi everyone, it's Beth. This practice is going to be a heart rate lifter. We're gonna move through some stuff. We're gonna um, make good use of our time um, as we're moving kind of quickly through some things and getting that heart rate up. Please keep in mind that it is never okay to feel pain in yoga. It's never okay to feel compression, sudden bursts of heat or shock type feeling. Um, listen to your own body. This is not a time to be a perfectionist. This is not a time to let your ego get the best of you. We're here to feel our body, to feel our pulse lift up in a way that feels energizing, not punishing. So as long as you're here for all of the right reasons, get on your mat. We're gonna begin seated. Um, this practice isn't going to be super long. So we're gonna get right into it. So find your comfortable seat. Hands to knees, start to just turn the chest around, taking the right rib to the right, and then to the front, and then to the left, and then to the back, and just smooth out those edges a few times. Try to notice how it feels in your spine. Take your time, and then reverse the direction of the circling. Ask yourself if maybe one hip is in a bad mood, or maybe it's the low back. Maybe you're feeling great today. Good. And then take the fingers to the bony bits at the tops of the shoulder blades. So we're chicken winging out through the elbows. Inhale here, try to take the elbows as far back behind you as you can. Exhale, elbows towards center, curve through the spine. Inhale, open, exhale, close. Inhale, open, exhale, close. Good, start to move a little quicker. Encourage the breath through the diaphragm, with the diaphragm, rather. So it's kind of like a modification of Kapalabhati. Inhale, stay open, elbows come as far back as they can. Good, exhale, right hand down to the ground, walk the fingertips away, keep that left sit bone grounded, reach that left arm. Draw the left shoulder blade into the socket. Good, you can stay here or start to reach that left hand over towards that right side, keep that left sit bone on the ground. So it's gonna to wanna to chase the left hand, don't let that happen. Good, take that left hand to the occipitals, the back of the skull, open up through the elbow. Inhale, exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, open, exhale, inhale, open, exhale. Good, come right back to center, roll out the shoulders. Interlace the fingers, the low back. Draw the knuckles down towards the ground. Try to keep the heels of the palms moving towards one another. Inhale, lift up for the chin. Wide open mouth, exhale. Inhale. Wide open mouth, exhale. Inhale. This time, forehead towards the ground, knuckles towards the sky, exhale. Good, roll up to a straight spine, rolling out the shoulder. Left hand walks towards that left side, either coming up the forearms, keeping the elbow lifted, right arm reaches, draw that right shoulder blade into the socket, keep that right sit bone grounded so it's not lifting up to chase that right hand. Good, staying here or bringing the right hand towards the left side. Breathe. Keep that right sit bone rooted. Good, taking that right hand to the back of the skull, opening up through the elbow on the inhale, closing on the exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. One more time, inhale, exhale. Good, new 
pro spine. Tucking the chin deeply into the chest. Noticing that your neck is getting a little bit longer as you draw the chin in. Inhale here, let the chest rise up towards the chin. Reach up through the chin, extend through the throat, open the mouth, let it go. Good. Roll into a skinny position. Taking your time here, stacking everything up, and then start to move through cat and cow. Good. Circle the pelvic bone a little bit, release the low back. And then neutral spine, make sure you're lined up right. Take the right toes to the back of the room. That right hip point stays pointing towards the mat. Left arm comes straight up. Draw the left shoulder into the side. Good. Stay here for a breath. Notice that the navel is drawing to the spine. And then we're going to take the left arm to the left and the right leg to the right. And then back. Out. And back. Out. Back. Keep breathing out. Back, try to keep that right leg high, out, back. Next time it's out, stay, drop that right foot down. Outer edge of that right foot is grounded. Roll all the way up, roll out the shoulders, take that right hand down to the right ankle, reach that left arm. Good, right there, I'm sorry, left hand starts to come down to the ground, rest wrist underneath the shoulder, reach that right arm up. Good, and then walk the fingertips forward. Start to draw the hips back, so it's kind of like a, a gate pose and, and child's pose had a baby. Good, take the left arm, thread it underneath that right armpit. So you're coming out of that left shoulder. Maybe you reach towards the foot. I don't know, maybe I am today. Nah, not for me today. Maybe you're reaching, maybe you're not. One more breath. Good. Coming back through into that right hand down, left knee down, right arm reaches, I'm sorry, left arm reaches, right toes reach. Deep inhale, exhale, elbow to knee, hold here for a moment, pulse, so you're pressing knee into the elbow, pressing that right hand into the ground. Now use that left hand to take that right knee in front of the left, open your feet as wide as you can, and slide your hips back. So maybe you're just sliding the whole time, or maybe start to nuzzle your sit bones between the heels, come into gomkasana legs, house face legs, roll the shoulders. Good, a little bit of compression of the inner thighs in towards the midline, inhale. Exhale, maybe with a straight-ish spine, you start to walk forward. Keeping the sit bones grounded, press the outer edges of the feet down into the ground. One more breath. Good, rock forward, untangle the legs, cat and cow. Good. Left toes reach, right arm reaches, shoulder away from the ear. Try to get them as far apart as you can, the fingertips and the tips of the toes. And take them out and back in. Navel to spine, pelvic floor to navel. So this is Mula Bandha. Mula Bandha is that drawing up of the pelvic floor towards the navel, and it's a very good stabilizer for the low back. Prevents injury, it's very, very strengthening to all sorts of basic human functions that we really want to have. <laughs> it's essentially the top of the people. That gives you an indication of why we want it. Good. Hold here. Elbow to knee. Tiny little pulses. We're pulsing to try to get a deeper arch in our spine and to get a little deeper into that little belly here. Good. Use your hand. Cross the knee in front of the other knee. Open the feet wide. Maybe rock forward and back. Or maybe just nuzzle on down. Press into the outer edges of the feet. Press into both sit bones. Inhale. 
Exhale, fold. Try to notice that the sit bones stay rooting. One more breath. Good. Rock forward, untangle. Forgot gate pose on the other side. So take that left foot, right arm, and take it out. Hold there. Drop that outer edge of the left foot down. Roll up. Roll off the shoulders a little bit. Rock that left hand down to the left ankle. Reach that right arm. And then move through space. Right hand comes down to the ground. Left arm reaches. Good. Hands forward. Slide the hips back to the heel. Modified gate slash child's pose. Take that right arm, right underneath. Reach towards that left foot. You're on the right temple and right shoulder-ish. Try to keep the outer edge of that left foot grounded. Good. And then release. Back into table. Back in cow. Good. Tuck the toes. Downward facing dog. Wag out the feet a little bit. Bend and unbend the knees. Put a little bit of movement in the spine. Good. Turn the toes out. Turn the heels in. Walk your hands back. Bend your knees. Find Malasana pose. So Malasana is yogi squat. Your heels can be up if you need them to be. Otherwise, sinking into the tailbone, finding length in the spine, that sense of rising through the crown of the head. Hands can be on the ground or at your heart. Inhale here. Open mouth, let it go. Inhale. Open mouth, let it go. Good. So, you can stay here. There's a lot of good work that's being done in this position. Or, we're going to take this right foot and we're just going to hop it a little bit forward and then back. And again, forward, same foot, a few times. Try to keep the sit bones moving towards the ground. So you're not lifting all the way up like this. Try to stay close to the ground. Good. And then hold, Malasana pose. Inhale. Exhale, reach that right arm in front of that right knee. Reach that left arm up. Open up the chest. Keep the sit bones reaching towards the mat. And then both arms forward. Roll up to a straight spine and Malasana staying here. Or left foot, stomp it forward and back. Keep breathing, keep that crown of the head reaching up and stay as low as you can. Good, hold, left arm in front of that left knee, reach that right arm up. Breathe. Good, hands down, toes forward. Ragdoll pose. Bend the knees deeply. Tuck the chin into the chest. Roll up. Roll out the shoulders. Good. Walk to the front of the mat. Notice where your feet are. Think about that idea of Mula Bandha again. Pulling the pelvic floor to the navel. The navel to the spine. The side belly weaves towards the midline. Notice all of that rising up towards the diaphragm. Notice that the ribs are lifted, the palms are open. Press to the big toe and the pinky toe, the sides of both feet. One deep, slow, stabilizing breath here. On the next inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, hinge of the hips, forward fold. Halfway up. Forehead towards chin. Step that right foot back. Drop it at about a 45 degree angle. Bring your hands to your hip points. Make sure that both hip points are facing forward. If they're not, maybe take your feet a little wider. Building Vera One or Warrior One legs. Good. Inhale, sweep the fingertips up. Exhale, hold post arms. Palms face forward. Elbows bend. Draw the shoulder blades down the spine and together with the heart. Good, let the arms fall, roll the shoulders. 
Press into that back heel. Interlace the fingers, start to draw the knuckles towards that back knee and just draw a few circles or a crazy eight, whatever, back there. Try to keep that bend of the front knee. Good, draw the knuckles towards the back of the mat. Inhale. On the exhale, bring that left shoulder towards the inside edge of the left knee. Humble order. Good, let your head hang and be passive. And then as if the knuckles are drawing you back up again, lift yourself up, 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 and then swoop the fingers all the way up. Warrior one. Good. Slide your hands to your heart. Press into that back heel. Press into the front heel until you feel the hamstring on that back, or I'm sorry, I'm holy moly on the front leg, <laughs> start to wake up and start to tip your weight forward. Make sure that this right hip point stays pointing towards the mat. Warrior three. Deep breath here. Point through the toe. Reach, reach, reach. Navel to spine. Hollow floor to navel. Breathe. Arms alongside the body. Thumbs down, palms in. Good, hands down to either the ground or blocks in front of you. Reach the right toes towards the sky. Standing split. Try to keep that hip square. Good. Now bend the flying knee, scoot it forward towards the nose, arch the back, try to touch the nose with the knee, send it back up. And again, and back up, and again, and back up. One more time. And then back up. Good. Drop that flying foot down, square the forward foot, step it back, plank position. Holding plank here, no same strength. Good, cover the right toes. This, for me, is very, very hard. We're going to work on that cross balance strength. So right toes hover, left hand hovers. Good, maybe you take that left arm forward, point the right toes. Good, switch. <laughs> left toes, why is this so hard? I don't know. Left toes hover, right hand hovers. Maybe reach the arm, point the toe. Good, everything down, plank position. Inhale, exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, down the Good, wag your tail. Option, you can hold down your dog or you can start to add tiny, tiny little hops to your feet, making sure that the shoulders are strong so that the head stays dangling and the neck sit stays soft the whole time. So the hops are really, really small. Getting the lymphatic system going and starting to notice what starts to wake up in the shoulders, the belly. Good. Good, maybe the hops start to get a little bigger. Maybe, 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 and then maybe some more. Holy moly. Maybe you kick the heels towards the glutes. Good, and then down the dog. Breathe. I have a jumbly brain. Whew. Okay, one more breath. Step the right foot forward. Drop that left foot at about a 45 degree angle. Check in with your hip points. Make sure that that back edge of the back foot is really dragging the mat away from the front heel. Good. Inhale, sweep the arms up, here one. Think about the ribs rolling up towards the ceiling. Good, exhale, go goal post arms, elbows down, shoulder blades, press the heart up. Good, let the arms fall, roll out the shoulders. Interlace the fingers, draw the knuckles towards that back knee. Good, and then start to bring the shoulder towards the inner right knee. Keep the heart open. When you think about humility, 
And this is humble warrior. Humility, you need that wide open heart. Also, humility is not easy. You can notice that too. Good, like the knuckles are drawing you up out of it. Sweep the fingers all the way up. Warrior one. Slide the hands to the heart. Start to press the weight towards that front heel. Lift. Warrior three. That left hip point stays pointing towards the ground. That left foot is pointed. Reach through the toes. Breathe. Really engage this quadricep, the standing quadricep. Notice that the navel is drawing towards the spine. Good, hands down. Maybe they're on a block, a couple blocks, or something that elevates you, or maybe they're on the ground. Reach that left foot towards the sky, standing split. Left knee in, and up. Left knee bends, bring it towards the nose. Send the foot up, and again, send it up, and again. Send it up once more. And again, send it up good. Back foot comes back, front foot comes back, plank position. Deep breath here. Good. With or without knees, chaturanga, but hold it. So chaturanga not to your belly, but chaturanga into that forelimb scap pose, neck is long. Breathe. Don't lose the pointy finger mound of the hands. One more breath. Good, press back up, plank. Whew. Inhale. <laughs> Exhale, shoulder up. Hold, hold. Navel is fine. <laughs> One more breath. And then press up, plank. Good. <laughs> Good, and then all the way down. <laughs> Cobra. Downward dog. Wag out the tail. You can go right back to that first version of hopping. You can hold. Zero hopping. Or left hand or left foot stays grounded, right toes reach, bend the flying knee, bring it towards the nose, send it up, hop. Doesn't have to be much of a hop. Try to land that hopping foot like you're not going to make a sound. Good. If you're hopping, stop the hop. <laughs> Take that right leg behind the left. Cross like a downward dog. You should feel something like something in the IT band. Oh, the head is no relapse at all. Uncurl. Play the tail. Good. Right foot grounds, left foot up. Repeating the other form of hopping, staying completely still, or left knee in, hop on the right foot. Keep breathing. Use your belly. Keep the shoulders engaged. One more time. Good. Cross that leg behind the other. Cross leg down or dog. I'm winded. Yeah. Quarantine hasn't done me many favors in terms of physical endurance. Emotional endurance? Hell yeah. Physical endurance? It's like couch to fridge to couch to fridge to couch to fridge, <laughs> which I'm fine with. Unwind, downward dog. Good, drop the knees, hips to heels, child's. Good, tuck the hips. Before we rise up into our downward dog, just press back into the heels a little bit. Maybe you take your hands back, maybe you even lift your knees. Just kind of wag out the heels. Good. And then wrap all the way up, downward dog. Mm. 
Not yet. Yes and no. Walk the hands back to the feet. Rag bell. Turn the toes out. Heels in. Moss. Deep breath here. So this is a really good place to stay. If you want to stay here, stay here. If you want to. Otherwise, taking the left arm out first. The tricep lines the inner left knee. Right arm up. And then flip the hand. So both palms are facing back. Hinge at the elbows. Like so. Maybe you grab hands. Maybe you can get to the wrist. Wherever you're at. Good. Hold forward, other side. This is a great way to open up both the heart, the chest, and the hips. All in one bound up Malvasana pose. Good. Now we're here. Let the arms go, hands to heart. Deep inhale, rise up to the crown of the head. Exhale, toes forward, head down, rag down. Inhale, roll up. Exhale, open up the hands, throw the work. Good. Step into the front of the mat. Opening up the palms. Inhale, swoop up. Exhale, swoop down. Halfway up. Floor head down. Step that right foot back, dropping that right foot at about a 45 degree angle, coming into pyramid pose, legs at least. Squaring your hips, interlacing the fingers. Draw the knuckles to the back of your room. Alternatively, you can bring your hands to blocks or the ground, such as this, or here, if you've got, just picture imaginary blocks in your hands. You can bring a whole head to knee, bring a roll to you. Otherwise, follow me. Interlacing the fingers, knuckles towards that back knee to start. Think about that right hip point coming forward, left hip point coming back. Draw the knuckles like it's a tug of war. Knuckles away from the heart, heart away from the knuckles. Bring your spine to parallel, fold, and really press into both heels. And then release that press and then press again. And then release that press and press again. And then press so hard into your heels that they feel like they're drawing the mat in half. In this tug of war, you can rip the mat up and then release down. Maybe you stay with the hands bound, maybe you release the hands, keep breathing. And then, if you haven't released the hands yet, release the hands. Take the right hand into somewhere on the inside edge of the left foot, spiral up, reverse trikonasana, deep digestive twist. Good. Left hand down. Press that left foot into the ground, bend the knee for support, and come to standing, bending this right knee, float on the foot. This might be where you stand, where you stay. Good place to stay. Lots of balance work happening, as you can tell by me teetering. <laughs> Good. Or maybe you take the peace sign fingers to that big toe, start to draw that knee in, and then maybe start to kick that leg out. If you kick the leg out, draw the hip into the socket. You can have this knee as bent as you need it to be. So this is a great pose. Maybe you start to open the leg to the right. Maybe that left arm comes out too. Inhale. Open mouth, exhale. Inhale. Open mouth, exhale. One more inhale. Open mouth, exhale, good. Release it the same way you found it. So, taking it all the way back, pyramid pose. Hands down. Fold into that forward leg. At this point, if you have a split practice, Colleen, um, <laughs> you can start to walk that foot back, the right foot back. You can start to walk this left foot forward. 
Don't push it too hard and don't be too attached to the split. It is one of those poses. I actually got my first split for the first time ever the other day. I don't think it's gonna come back to me here. It's not about that. No one's gonna give you like a merit badge. Pressing both feet. Keep breathing. Notice the heart lift. One more time. And then with some respect for your body, into your way out, finding plant pose. Wobble up through the hips a little bit. Deep breath here. Shut around the hold. Press up. Exhale, shut around the hold. Press up. Exhale, shut around the hold. Cobra. Down the dog. Leg it down. Good. Step the right foot forward. Drop that left foot down at a 45 degree angle. Check in with your hips. So we like to, or by we, I mean our bodies, we like to find that little path of least resistance. So if you can, it's going to take this right foot forward. And then you're going to go, oh, yeah, this feels great. It shouldn't feel painful, but we're training those muscles to be stronger, stabilize the back, stabilize the front, and the fingers, press into that back heel, so don't lose that. Then press into the front heel, too. Start to find that tug of work between the chest and the knuckles. Inhale. Exhale, push those heels deeper into the ground. Inhale. Exhale, press those heels into the ground. Inhale. Exhale, push and try to drag them apart. Good, and release. Spine is long. Keep drawing that right hip into the socket. Left hand stays grounded. Right arm spins up. Keep pressing into that heel. Good. Hand down. Bend this front knee. Start to scoop this left leg up. Maybe stay. Maybe peace sign finger. Fingers to the big toe. Think about the height of the chest, the integrity of the spine. Your back isn't bowing. Good. Maybe take that leg forward. Draw that leg into its socket. And then maybe start to open up. Keep breathing. If you have to hold your breath, it's no longer a yoga pose. The breath should be moving through the body, even if that makes you feel a little less stable. Good. Trace it back. Good. So from here, here's options. You can hold your downward dog. You can take a child's pose. You can play around with um, any kind of uh, core strengthener that you want to do because that's more or less what we're doing here. Um, or you can follow me. Get your ego off the mat. Take the left foot, center it just a little bit more. Take the right leg to the sky. Bend that flying knee, scoot it towards the right tricep, and like you're a dog peeing on a fire hydrant, hook the leg to the side, and then send it back. So you can stick with that version, or knee towards the armpit, lift the outer edge of the foot, shut a run, take it up. Again, building on it. Knee towards the armpit, outer blade of the foot lifts, shut a run, then maybe straighten the leg. Take it up. One more option, coming forward, knee to tricep, chaturanga, lift that back leg, ekopada kumanyasana. Can't remember if this is two, avana, breathe. Good, land the flying foot, send that 
right foot to the sky, down and up. Everyone's going to meet with knees down on the ground. Child's. Good for wrists. Good. Walk the hands forward. Tent the armpits and the forearms away from the ground. Lift your head and just shift your ribs a little side to side. Good. Down and up. Left leg up. Bend the flying knee, scoot it forward, send the foot up, bend the flying knee, scoot it forward, chaturanga, then the, or send that leg up, bend the flying knee, maybe straighten the leg, chaturanga, send it up, bend the flying knee, find the armpit, maybe straighten that leg, Maybe lift the flat to the back leg. Breathe into Akapada Kundanyasana. Hello, floor. Good. <laughs> Send it back. Leg down. Knees down. Child's. What about child's? Feels good. Roll up to seated on your heels. Notice your breath. Roll out the shoulders a little bit. So taking a moment and noticing your heart rate, if you were an akapata-er or an attempted akapata er <laughs> you're going to maybe want to get your heart rate down a little bit before we do a back bend. So just sit with it. And then stacking the shoulders on top of the knees in a high kneel. Taking the heels and the forearms to the low back of the poor man's back row right here. Shift through the hips. And then maybe tuck the toes or maybe use props. Starting with the left arm, windmill it around and down. Clutch with the heel, the low back for the prop. And then the right side. Up, around, and down. Camel pose is essentially bridge pose, but you're on your knees. So think about that shape. Think about the hip points pressing forward, the same way you press them towards the ceiling. If you want to wild abandon your head back, do it, but not at the cost of your neck. And if your neck isn't in wild abandon mood, then kind of roost your chin forward and it'll spare your neck that exhaustion. Couple breaths. Lifting up to the ribs. Taking your time. And then slowly. And all the way back. Knees wide open. Hands forward. Three. Good. Down the back. Stepping that right foot forward because in my dislike of splits in general, I forgot to do the sign. If you don't have a split practice, you can go back into a pyramid or you can find half Hanuman. Inching heels away from heat, the feet away from feet. Staying lifted. Sinking into it only as much as your legs think are a good idea. Breathing, getting your ego off the mat. Good. 
Mais. Down dog. Walking the hands back to the feet. Taking the toes out, heels in. Malasana, sinking the tailbone down. Bringing your hands to your heart. Nose in. just a short seated meditation to help integrate all of that work and find some stillness again. Have my have my singing bowl around so I'm gonna use that. Making sure you're in a comfortable seat. So sitting on something if you need to, finding your breath, relaxing the belly. Good. You can try in the singing bowl. And then I'm going to give us just about two to three minutes of silence. And then I'll try in the bowl once more. Lying down onto your back. Drawing the knees into the chest. Taking the knees down to the right. center to the left. And then back to center. Allowing the legs to stretch out long. Allowing the toes to fall in opposite directions. Letting the arms fall alongside the body. Flipping the palms to the sky, allowing there to be a gentle curl of the fingers. 
allowing yourself to receive the practice. Feeling the vitality moving in the body. Giving yourself permission to rest. to the right side. And then pressing yourself up to sit. May the kindness we wish to see in this world begin with the kindness we extend to ourselves. Namaste. Thank you, everybody.